What a roller coaster ride the Ryzen launch has been. Between the hype in the run up to its launch and AMD's stern refusal to reveal any but the barest details, everybody is talking about Ryzen. But could anything live up to this level of expectation? Let's find out. Browse privately and securely with TunnelBear, the simple VPN app. Try TunnelBear for free at the link in the video description. Meet Zen, AMD's brand new CPU architecture, the Ryzen 7 flavor of which is launching today. It sports eight cores, each with SMT, so similar to Intel's hyperthreading, and boasts a whopping 52% improvement in instructions per clock over AMD's previous best and a TDP of only 65 to 95 watts. That is a big shot across Intel's bow, especially considering the Ryzen 7 has been positioned as performance competitive with the enthusiast class Core i7-6800K and 6900K, six and eight core chips that Intel rates at 140 watts. So how did AMD do it? Well, there's a lot of nitty gritty that we won't get too deep into, but here's the TLDR. AMD's Sense MI allows the processor to thoroughly monitor itself, accurate to within a milliamp, millivolt, milliwatt, and single degree Celsius 1,000 times per second. AMD's Precision Boost uses that data along with individual testing at the factory to determine the ideal clock frequency within 25 megahertz steps for optimal performance, even going as far as to boost beyond the rated speed using Extended Frequency Range, or XFR. Add that to their Infinity Fabric Scalable High Speed Interconnect, smarter branch prediction, a smarter neural net inspired prefetch, and a more efficient cache setup, and you've got a very oversimplified nutshell version of Ryzen. Of course, its performance would be meaningless if it weren't priced competitively. And uh, boy howdy is it ever! Currently, the most expensive CPU in the range is 499 US, which might seem like a lot if you compare it to Intel's mainstream flagship Core i7-7700K at 349. But AMD reckons their top dog is more comparable to the Core i7-6900K, a $1,050 chip. Of course, with their history of hype training the bananas out of mediocre CPU releases, we can't just take AMD's word for any of this. So let's dive straight into the moment you've all been waiting for, hands on with Ryzen. We'll be pitting Ryzen 7 against rivals Core i7-6900K, 6800K, and 7700K, and for fun, we've also thrown in the Core i5-7600K and dusted off our FX8350, with each bench kitted out with a Titan XP and 32 gigs of G-Skill memory. Shout out at this point to ASUS for providing and helping us learn the ins and outs of their ROG Crosshair 6 Hero. Built with AMD's X370 chipset, the first new enthusiast chipset since 2011 for AMD, and a few special ASUS twists, like their native USB 3.1 front panel connector, comprehensive overclocking and tweaking toolset, RSync RGB lighting, compatibility with AM3 and AM4 cooler holes, and their new S1220 audio solution. It should be noted that you won't need the more expensive X370 unless Crossfire and SLI support is important to you. But in spite of all of ASUS's help, think back to that asterisk about 30 seconds ago. While I would love to say that the early rumors of AM4 having difficulty hitting higher memory frequencies were greatly exaggerated, our 1800X chip managed a mere 2666 megahertz with multiple kits, including the ones supplied by AMD. Any higher, no post. 
We hope this can be ironed out in firmware, but with how heavily AMD Zen architecture relies on fast, low latency RAM to keep the cores fed, our scores for synthetic benchmarks in particular might suffer a little bit. Kicking off our testing, we have Y Cruncher at 50 million digits of delicious pie. The 1800X doesn't fare so well in the single-threaded test, but pulls just ahead of the 7600K in the multi-threaded one. This test is RAM intensive though, so this lower than expected result isn't surprising. Cinebench, being much closer to a real-world workload, paints a more optimal picture, with Ryzen actually beating out the 6900K in the multi-threaded test and coming in just under in the single-threaded test. CPU Mark's single-threaded test puts Ryzen back at the bottom of our modern CPUs, while in the overall, it slips in neatly between the 6900 and 6800K. Moving on to 7-Zip, Ryzen killed it, coming in well above all but the 6900K. And PC Mark tells a similar tale, with AMD's Ryzen 7 flagship outperforming the X99 chips in both tests. Though it should be noted that PC Mark's lightly multi-threaded workload definitely favors the 7700K's blistering clock speeds. RealBench continues the overall trend. Although we see Ryzen stumble with heavy multitasking here, a potential RAM speed limitation. While an Adobe Media encoder, Ryzen 7 and the X99 chips are very competitive. Addo reveals no obvious storage bottleneck with similar if slightly lower results to our Intel test benches. And then moving on to gaming. Deus Ex Mankind Divided shows a fairly tight race with Ryzen in the middle. Rise of the Tomb Raider sees Ryzen rise to the occasion to take top spot, which it managed to hold in an older title, Crisis 3. Moving on to a more esports oriented title, we tested CSGO specifically with chips that represent the best single threaded performance that Intel has to offer today and that AMD has today and before the launch of Ryzen. Unsurprisingly, if you're running a 240 Hz monitor like this one from ASUS that we checked out before and your PC's purpose is pure frame pushing, the 7700K might not look quite as obsolete as AMD would like it to. For our streaming test, we gave it a worst case scenario with Ashes of the Singularity's CPU focused benchmark, both with and without OBS recording in the background. We compared the recording performance to streaming and it was the same. And at Twitch quality, we see that actually none of our CPUs really had a hard time with this over just running the benchmark. The 6900K runs away with this one, while the poor FX8350 wishes we'd left it on the shelf. Compared to Intel QuickSync encoding, the output from our X264 testing is quite a bit clearer to my eyes, but go ahead and pause the video to take a close look at this blown up shot to judge for yourself. Let us know if you'd like us to dig deeper into streaming in the comments below, because AMD was showing Ryzen just butt kicking the 7700K. So did AMD come out of nowhere then? Leapfrog Intel on performance and disrupt the market? Well, yes, no, and yes. Our, te our testing shows the top end 1800X sitting between the 6900K and 7700K when it comes to single threaded performance and hovering around but not quite matching the 6900K in our multi-threaded tests. There's no question here that heavier users will love AMD right now for bringing more affordability to high core count chips without the massive power draw and single threaded compromises that existed before. And as for coming out of nowhere with this, that definitely happened, but I'm actually not sure who gets the credit for Ryzen 7's disruptive positioning. Is it AMD for coming in and giving the consumer nearly twice the performance per dollar value of a 6900K? Or is it Intel for stubbornly refusing to acknowledge the benefits of more cores for the mainstream consumer and creating a confusing product stack where bang for the buck varies so dramatically within their own products? They handed AMD's marketing department 
a lot of firepower here by allowing them to bang the twice the value of the 6900K drum, while conveniently ignoring that Intel also produces chips that deliver twice the value of a 6900K or more. I guess that's neither here nor there though. The major takeaway here isn't that the 1800X devoured all in its path, but that as AMD used to be so good at doing, they've identified a market segment where no directly competing product really exists and engineered a solution. Enthusiasts looking for something bigger than a 7700K, but not wanting to lose single threaded performance and eat nothing but instant noodles for a year by stepping up to a 6900K will be delighted with the Ryzen 7 lineup. Meanwhile, professionals who don't need eight RAM slots or Thunderbolt will also find a CPU that performs better than Intel's mainstream while lacking a couple of extras, very appealing. And all of this ignores too, the six core and four core Zen core solutions that are coming later on this year to disrupt Intel's Core i5 and Core i3 products. So AMD fans rejoice then. With Ryzen, AMD is back in a big way. And even if you're on team blue, you should be happy too, because competition is always good for the consumer. Do you feel like your cellular provider doesn't give a rat's patoot about you? Who am I kidding? Of course you do. So check out Ting. We've got a link in the video description. These guys are all about customer service. When you call them, you do not speak to a robot. There is no phone tree. You get put through directly to a person. And somehow they managed to do that with a very affordable average Ting bill of only $23 per month per device for their customers. They do this by making everything pay for only what you use. So, all you do is head over to their savings calculator. That's linus.ting.com. We've got that link below. You enter your last few bills, you enter how much you're paying now, and it spits out how much you'll save by switching to Ting. And they've actually got lower data rates across the board now. So don't hesitate. Check it out today, and if you switch, you'll also get $25 in service credit or towards a new device using our link. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you can dislike, but if you liked it, hit the like button. Get subscribed, maybe check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. While you're down there, we've got a merch store and a community forum as well, which you should check out. And now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So check out that little uh, video player thumbnail thing. Go ahead, click it. There'll be another one of our videos there. You'll like it. That was the computer. Okay, well that was exciting. <sighs> this is probably still okay.